In this video, we're looking at templates in Reaper from plugin presets all the way up to project templates. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Get two months of free premium access with the link in the description. So in Reaper, we've got plugin presets, we've got effects chains, we have track templates, and we have project templates. Let's go through all the different variations of those, why you would choose one over another. We're gonna start with the smallest, just the plugin preset. Let's bring up a plugin such as ReEQ, for example. I've actually got a starting point preset that I use. So I just named it Start, and it is a plugin window that is a specific size. I have the tabs hidden, and I have the band type and starting frequency that I like to have. Um, once you have your plugin set the way you like, you hit this little plus button and you get this menu. You can save it as a preset, which just puts it in the list, or you can save the preset as the default, which means that every time you open this plugin, it's gonna look exactly the same. So I use save preset as default. I give it a name for my default presets. I always call it start, but you can call it anything you want and hit OK. And so now that preset is in the preset list here. A plugin preset does not include a few things, um, anything that's in this effects parameter list, uh, things like the parameter modulation and the MIDI learn assignments, those do not get saved or recalled with plugin presets. So just something to keep in mind, if you have something that's complex that requires external hardware or anything like that, that's not gonna get saved with your plugin presets. Before we move on to the next type of template, let's look in Reaper's options menu and go down to show Reaper resource path and explorer slash finder. And if we look in this folder, we see a folder called presets. And in here we've got VST reeq.ini, and that's where the presets for the plugins are saved. And this is where you'll find them if you ever need to back them up or uh, rearrange them. You can rearrange them in a plain text editor. You just kind of change the preset number and moves the data around. It's pretty simple. And you can also manage the list of presets. Here, you can move up or down. You can delete a preset or rename. It's not a great way of managing presets. Um, it's almost easier to edit in the text editor uh, if you really want to like change this to alphabetical or any other order. Uh, but you can do basic preset management there. Up next are effects chains. And effects chains can be multiple effects uh, on a single track with any MIDI assignments for controls and as well uh, any parameter modulation you might have in there. So let's set up some parameter modulation for band three here. I'm going to increase the gain and I'll use an LFO to modulate between, let's say, about 300 hertz and five kilohertz. So I'm going to go to the plugins param menu go to parameter modulation MIDI link. I'll set the starting point to the center, LFO, and I'll set the strength to approximately the 300 to 5K range. And I'll just uh, put this direction on centered and adjust the strength, something like that maybe shift the baseline a little bit so that it, yeah, so that's about right. So I've got that set up and I can also take another parameter like band four. I'll, I'll also move the frequency. Um, so I'll just make sure that frequency is the last touch. Go to parameter modulation, MIDI link, and I'll actually link it from the previous parameter. So band three's uh, frequency will control band four's frequency, but I will just offset it a little bit by 20% or so. And you can see that as I get this boost, I also get a dip right above it. So just an example, kind of an interesting effect. And let's open up the effects chain. So here's the effects chain. I'll just double click this to pop it into uh, the chain window. If I right click in here, I've got options for effects chains. I've got load, load default, save selected effects as chain, save all effects as chain, 
and save all effects as default chain for new tracks. I wouldn't recommend using that one. Uh, most of the people that I see using that accidentally did it and uh, yeah, cause all kinds of problems if you accidentally click it. So usually I do the one in the middle, save all effects as chain. And it asks me where I wanna save. Um, Reaper already has an effects chains folder set up for you, but you can add in additional subfolders here. I'll make a new folder called EQ, and I'll call this uh, moving mid-band, something like that, just as an example. And so if I remove this plugin from the chain, I add in an effects chain, uh, the effects browser will pop up. Let me just pop this out. So on your computer, it might look like this with a floating window. It's also, you can dock it if you want. Um, if we click here on effects chains in our list, I can just search for EQ, and here's my moving EQ, uh, moving mid-band EQ. If I open that up, that plugin opens as it was with the moving um, parameter modulation. And of course, you can have as many plugins as you want in this effects chain with uh, as, many, as much parameter modulation and linking to other uh, plugins and all that kind of stuff as you want. Put in a couple more plugins in here. Let's put in um, put in Recomp and load up a plugin preset. And I can add in a delay. And again, loading in a preset. I can save this as an effects chain. I'll just put it in the same one. Replace. I'll show you some shortcuts for clearing the effects chain. You can hold down the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows and just left click on the effects button um, in the TCP or the mixer, and that will clear the effects chain. If you right click here, you'll get a quick list of effects and effects chains. So I can go to EQ, moving mid-band, and all those plugins come up exactly as I left them, uh, the way that I saved it even with that moving EQ. So the next stage of template is the track template. You can insert track templates from the insert menu, insert menu track from template, and we can open up the folder for templates. We can browse our templates. And again, you can put these into folders like I have here. So I've got a bunch of instrument templates, uh, multi-track instrument templates. So things like, um, Contact six with 16 instruments and four aux tracks. Takes a second to load, but what I get is a folder with a track for contact. I've got 16 MIDI tracks. And in the mixer, I have channels uh, 19 through 38 uh, stereo audio outputs from contact. And so a track template can include a lot of things. So it includes the plugin settings, the plugin parameter modulation assignments, the MIDI learn assignments, uh, track colors, track show and hide, um, icons, track names, any sort of routing that is included inside of the template. So sends to tracks that are inside of the template will come over, but sends to other tracks that don't exist in the template won't work. So if you had, a, let's say a lead vocal template, that includes a, a send to a reverb, but the reverb isn't in that template, that send will be deleted. So yeah, I've got my routing from contact, um, all preset, so I don't ever need to open up this window. It's all done right uh, the first time for me. This saves a ton of time because contact routing is such a pain. And if we open up the view menu and go to the track manager, um, you can see here that I've got my MIDI tracks showing in the TCP, and I have the MIDI tracks hidden in the MCP and the reverse. So I don't have my audio outs uh, coming up in the arrange view, because uh, you don't really need those until you are are automating things, plugins and, and volumes. And uh, the MCP has uh, those listed so I can easily add effects and things like that. So a lot of things can be included in a track template. I'm going to select all these tracks and give them a color so they'll be this color, all, all consistent color. And um, I'm going to right click on 
you can do this on a folder track or if you have all the tracks selected, um, whatever, whatever number of tracks you want selected, you can do this. And you go to save tracks as track template, uh, make a new folder, choose an existing folder, that kind of stuff. And you give this a name. Um, I'm going to hit cancel here because I don't want to overwrite my template. But um, yeah, you just same process as saving a, a plugin preset or a tr uh, effects chain. Just put it in the right folder, give it a name, and you'll be able to easily access this. One more thing before we move on from uh, track templates is track templates are also visible in the Media Explorer, and so we can browse them this way. So I'm going to remove all of the tracks from this project and then go to, let's say, my effects track folder um, or track templates folder. I can drag this in, and that imports the tracks with my plugin routing, my audio routing, um, colors, names, all that kind of stuff is right there. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform for creators with thousands of classes on art, design, productivity, and more. Skillshare is one of my favorite places to go for learning something new. This week, I've been enjoying Simple Productivity, How to Accomplish More with Less from Greg McEwen. He's the author of the book, Essentialism. I'm only a few videos in, but this has quickly become one of my favorites. And you can see some of my other favorites on the screen here. They have classes on pretty much everything, as well as workshops, which is a great way to learn as a community. First 500 people to click the link in the description will get two free months of Skillshare premium access. And if you want to continue for a full year, it's only about $10 a month. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now we're moving on to the largest type of template, the project template. So I've got a project loaded up here, and let's say I want to use this as the starting point for new songs, but not necessarily keeping the MIDI and the audio recordings that are here. So a project template includes everything inside of the project. It's essentially a normal type of project, except that it's write protected. So if you, um, you can record into it and things like that, make changes, but once you hit save, it's going to prompt you with a save as window. It's also going to default to a specific folder so that it shows up in the project templates list. So let's prepare this for being a project template. I'm going to uh, keep all the effects on this, keep all the track colors, that's all fine. But I do want to uh, set up this project a little bit differently by going to delete all of the media in the project. And these locked items, I'll just manually unlock and delete them. Actually, I'll just remove the contents of the selection. So this is an empty project, essentially, but I do have some uh, things like a synth and a couple guitar tracks set up, and I've got contact with drums set up here. Project templates will also include things like um, your zoom level. So if I want to be zoomed out to 3 minutes and 33 seconds, uh, like I have here, that's a good thing to to start with, I might want to have my grid set on um, four bars as my starting point. Um, I want to have my record mode set to time selection auto punch. Um, all my metronome settings, these will get saved with the project. If I open up uh, project settings from the file menu, things like the sample rate, things like the time base for items and markers, my media folder, I want to call it audio files. Uh, my recording form, all this stuff gets saved in the project template as well. So let's save it as a project template. File, project templates, and then save project as template. I actually don't use a lot of project templates. I probably should use them a lot more. I tend to manage my projects and create templates just in the file management of a finder in, inside the Mac rather than um, using Reaper's template management. I can give this a name like Rock Song Demo. If I got an idea for a rock song and I want a quick start for this, I don't have to choose the plugins or things like that. I don't want to route virtual drums and things like that. I can just start here and get recording very quickly. So hit save. I will close this project and uh, without saving there. And so I didn't disrupt my original project. Uh, but now if I go to File, Project templates, I've got rock song demo. And it just takes a minute to load because some of these plugins are quite heavy. 
Um, but this is loading in exactly as I left it. My zoom amount is the same, my grid settings, everything is exactly as I left it. Even the cursor not being at the start. Up at the top, it says unsaved project. So even though that, that original project was called BB Drums and I saved this template as rock song demo, this is an unsaved project. So before I do anything, if I wanna record into this project, I really should hit save once and it will uh, take me to my project folder and I can give this a name um, and a create a subdirectory for the project. Uh, let me show you a few more things about project templates. You can set up a default project template. So every time Reaper starts a new project, you're using a specific project. So that's in the Reaper preferences under project, top option here for the project template to use. So I go to browse and I select my one that I saved here earlier, um, actually years ago, that I just called default. So if I do project new, don't save. This has my settings for the media folder, project settings that I like to have. Uh, comes up with one track um, ready to go with one input, metronome off, I've got quarter note grid, any markers that I wanted in the project, like I always have the equal start marker in there that gets saved with my template. And this saves me a lot of time because um, anything in the options menu, anything in the main toolbar, those sorts of settings get saved with the project. So now you know all about templates in Reaper from plugin presets, how to save them, how to manage them, effects chains, track templates, and project templates. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. Thanks, guys. Thank you.